I want to talk to you about something very serious. Facebook depression. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, Dr. Gwen O'Keefe, Facebook depression may affect troubled teens who obsess over their online status. Dr. O'Keefe is a Boston area pediatrician, and she is the lead author of this new social media guideline from the Academy of Pediatrics. Facebook depression is something you need to take very serious. She offered guidelines that urge pediatricians to encourage parents to talk to their kids about online use and be aware of Facebook depression, cyberbullying, sexting, and other online risks. With in-your-face friend tallies and status updates and photos of happy-looking people having great times, they say that Facebook pages can make some kids feel even worse if they don't measure up to all of the other things they see on Facebook. Look at that kid. He has more friends than me. Look how happy they are. They're partying in those pictures. It's Facebook depression. Abby Abbott is 16. She is a high school sophomore in Chicago. She says the site has never made her feel depressed, but she said that she can understand how it might affect some kids. She said, if you really don't have that many friends and weren't really doing much with your life and saw other people's status updates and pictures of what they were doing with friends, I could see how that, you know, would make them upset. It's like a big popularity contest. Who can get the most friends requests or the most pictures tagged? So, the site that counts how many friends you have is like a big popularity contest. And therefore, you have to fear Facebook depression. What about other popularity contests like popularity (laughs) contests? What about those things in school? What about all of the other things in school? How many friends you actually have? Whether or not you're picked to play sports. Whether or not you get that part in the play or... Make it to uh, the band. Those things aren't... Me- no, no. Facebook depression is just as real. In fact, say it could be even more serious. It could be even more serious, more painful than sitting alone in a crowded school cafeteria, says Dr. O'Keefe, because um, other real-life encounters can make kids feel down, but because Facebook provides a skewed view of what's really going on, There's no way to see facial expressions or read body language that provide context. And therefore, Facebook depression is quite real. Hi there, this is Doc Thompson for the Midwest Center for the Treatment of Facebook Depression. Do you know the warning signs of Facebook depression? Do you feel alone? Have you lost interest in posting? Do you have mood swings where you post a lot one day and then not again for weeks? Well, maybe you are Facebook depressed. Do you feel guilty when you don't post as often or when you don't comment on others? Have you lost sleep due to posting? Have you had thoughts of Facebook suicide where you just terminate your account? These may indicate that you are Facebook depressed. At the Midwest Center for the Treatment of Facebook Depression, we care. We'll take the time to like the pointless things you post. We will comment even though you are only posting on stuff like off to work or just had salad. We will even take the time to play Farmville with you. If you feel like you can no longer go on Facebook, contact the Midwest Center for the Treatment of Facebook Depression. We are ready to friend you. I can only imagine that's the type of commercial you're going to hear very, very soon. Facebook depression. Doc Thompson, 700 WLW. Quick Tea Party update for you. Northern Kentucky, Boone County. 
as their Tea Party meeting tonight, 7 o'clock, the old Union Community Building. That's in Union, Kentucky. Again, Boone County, 7 o'clock tonight, the Tea Party meeting, old Union Community Building in Union. And then the Kenton County Tea Party is Wednesday night at 6. That's at Pee Wee's Restaurant, Crescent Springs, Kentucky. Kenton Tea Party, Wednesday night at 6. Pee Wee's, Pee Wee's Restaurant in Crescent Springs. So uh, if your kid has Facebook depression, you need to have a serious talk with them uh, because it's not that they are depressed. It's not it's that they haven't been really shown the real way of the world. They haven't been able to properly see what really happens in the world. Facebook depression is a joke. If kids are depressed, they're depressed. Facebook has nothing to do with depression by itself. To give it its own name is just creating some other way that some psychiatrist, psychologist, or pediatrician can make some dough. If somebody's depressed, they're depressed. Can Facebook lead to it? Sure, just like anything else can lead to it. But do we have a name for everything? I have pine tree depression. I realize my neighbor has more pine trees than me. No, we can, we can say that about anything. It's depression or it's not. Facebook depression because your kids see that other people have more friends. Here's one for you. Maybe that other kid is more popular. Maybe your kid is not likable. Maybe you, as a kid, as a teen in school, are not that likable. Maybe you're not as attractive. Whatever that means, physically, socially, personality. Maybe you're not as smart. These are the realities of the world. These are the realities that everybody else faces each and every day, whether you're in school or whether you're on a job. Guess what? There are people much, much smarter than me. In fact, most people are much, much smarter than me. There are people that are more attractive than me. These are things we have to deal with every day. People make more money. They have more friends. They're more likable. Go down the list. More talented. We have to find our way navigating these waters. Facebook depression? Can we find any other way to make kids victims? Facebook depression, something that a kid doesn't even have to be involved in. They don't have to be on Facebook. (laughs) Don't go on Facebook. You're depressed. You don't have as many friends. People don't like you. Don't go on Facebook. That seems like a pretty simple solution. I understand you have to go to school. So if you're not as popular at school, well, that's something you're going to have to deal with. Facebook, if it's depressing, then don't do it. Yeah, I keep, um, I keep hitting myself in the head with this hammer, and it really hurts. Don't hit yourself in the head with the hammer. How about that? Facebook depression. I can only imagine next we'll have ADFD, attention deficit Facebook disorder. That's where you're on Facebook, but you keep getting distracted by other people who are online. Yeah, I'm reading Susan's. Oh, Bob's on. Oh, Tom's. Oh, I really want to. Or I guess it could mean when you're trying to get other things done in your life, but all of a sudden, oh, I wonder what's going on in Facebook. I better post something. Yeah, I'm going to the movies. I better let everybody know what I'm doing. Facebook depression. What a bunch of gobbledygook. Mike sent me an email, doc, at 700wlw.com. He said, the only thing that depresses me about Facebook is the number of people who feel the need to let me know what the hell they're doing every minute of the day. I don't care how cute your pet is or what bar you got hammered at or how far you ran this week. I don't care what you found in Farmville or what question you answered about me. Geez, don't these people have anything better to do? Um, no, Mike, I really don't think they do. I re, uh, resisted Facebook for the longest time, and finally my fiance made an account for me, and she was updating it for the first couple of days. This is a couple of years ago. And I felt guilty that she was updating it. And I said, all right, I'll do it. Well, I'm going to do it unless you're really going to, I'll do it, okay. So I started updating it and doing it. And then as it turns out, because of my career, this is something we have to do to try to stay connected and let people know where we are all the time. That's what we do, which is a good point to tell you. If you're not a friend of mine on Facebook, please select me as a Facebook friend next time you're online. But I wouldn't be on it. 
There is no way I would be updating a Facebook profile if I didn't have to do this. It's not a bad medium if you're saying, okay, I have all of my family and immediate friends. There's 14 of us or 20 of us or whatever, and I post pictures so people can just go there so I don't have to actually print them out and go to their house and go, here we are in Cancun, and this is when we went paragliding. No. You can just go there and look at it. If it saves time, fine. But there's no way I'd be doing it if I didn't have to. Facebook depression. I guess there's Twitter depression as well, right? Chris in Oxford, you're on 700 WLW. Hey, I just wanted to comment on how, how these people, they, they, they comment on everything they do during their life or during their day, and then they come home and they're robbed, and they wonder why they're robbed. <laughs> I know. I'm going out of town for three weeks, yeah. That's, well, that's right. Not... It's just just tell, tell the whole world. And then, well, and then you also see the pictures of the stuff they got for Christmas that you know is in the house that's going to be empty. That's right. You, you watch them for for four or five months and you know you know pretty much everything about them well and then the other thing is if you um if you are taking pictures with your with your cell phone it puts a gps coordinator uh coordinates on the picture even if you don't see it so if you post those pictures then and you go hey here's the new tv i got for christmas people are like oh wow that's great they know where that tv is it's in the house at that location It's, it's like giving yourself putting a bullseye on your back what they'll do, Chris, and I appreciate the call, is, yeah, they'll, they'll say, okay, here's a picture of me in front of the new TV I got. By the way, now we're off to Cancun. And they see, or see pictures of Cancun, then they're like, okay, so the TV's at the house, and they just left. Listen, if you think you have Facebook depression, you need to get over yourself. It's not like you have problems like the cows in Russia have. What? Yeah, cows in Russia, they have, they're having some trouble. But fortunately, that's going to be rectified. President Dmitry Medvedev has permanently switched the clocks to only summertime. In other words, this fall, they will not set the clocks back. They will just stay on summertime. And that is because the cows are unhappy. Well, he said it's better for people too, but one of his main concerns is that cows are unhappy. He said animals who don't understand the time change and don't understand that the milkmaid is going to milk them at a different time. Cows are unhappy. Other animals also don't understand this. The animals in Russia were unhappy with all of the changing of the clocks back and forth. So they're just leaving it on summertime. Research commissioned by the health ministry did not come up with any evidence that moving the clocks affects people's health either way. He said there has not been any Proof that people suffer health problems when they switch clocks. But I have to ask you, have they spoken to the cows? Have they spoken to the cows to find out if the time change is affecting them? If they haven't asked the cows, then I say he's probably doing the right thing. Hi, this is Doc Thompson for the Russian Center for the Treatment of Bovine Time Change Depression. Do you know the warning signs of bovine time change depression? Are you a cow who doesn't understand why the milkmaid milks you at different times? Does it make you feel alone or confused? We at the Bovine Time Change Depression Clinic will make you feel special. We will make you feel great by milking you at the same time every day. We'll make sure our hands are warm. And we will not moo at you. Please support the Russian Center for the Treatment of Bovine Time Change Depression. Doc Thompson, 700 WLW. 700 WLW, coming up 1206 today. Which is more toxic, a Japanese nuclear power plant or your smartphone? Bill Cunningham, radioactive at 1206 today on 700 WLW. No, we see these disorders come up all the time. If whatever is in the news, whatever the popular buzz phrases are at the time, that's what people jump on. It makes for a good news story. It makes for a good story when uh, you've got certain people that want to write books. The American Association of Pediatrics or Pediatricians. Oh, they want to put it out there. gets their name out there. gives them more credibility. Facebook depression. How lame. 
Try to find more ways to make a kid a victim. You could just come up with anything. You know what? I was snubbed at the coffee shop the other day. Oh, made me feel self, uh, have low self-esteem. We need the Tri-State Center for the Treatment of Coffee Shop Low Self-Esteem after being snubbed. You know, a guy uh, pulled in front of me the other day and I let him in the line in traffic and what happened? He didn't give me the obligatory raise with the, the hand wave. You know, he didn't raise it up there and, hey, thanks a lot. Do you know how hurt that made me feel? I guess we need the Ohio Center for Low Self-Esteem because of the lack of obligatory traffic wave center. <laughs> Just go down the list. Get over it. What is your issue? And to do this, the problem is to target kids with this junk. Listen, pay attention to it. If your kids are screwing up, if Facebook becomes an obsession, whatever it is, fine. But it could be any number of things. They could get the same thing at school. To target kids with this junk just teaches them to be a, a victim as early on as possible. Instead of saying, if you don't like it, then don't do it. If you don't have friends... It might be you, (laughs) just so you know. Not that you are a bad person, but maybe you're not as outgoing. Maybe whatever. You as a parent know not everybody is going to have a lot of friends. Some people are introverts, and that's okay, too. Some people have very few friends. Some people have a couple of very close friends. Some people have a lot of friends. Not everybody is likable. Not every Is that what... Do we need a friend redistribution plan in America? Is that what we need? The government will tell you exactly how many friends you can have. And if somebody on Facebook has way too many friends or way too many friends in life, they'll step in and say, whoa, 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 that's way too many. We're going to have to take some of those friends and give them to this guy over here. I would think that makes sense. You don't want one person to have a whole lot of friends, do you? Matt sent me an email, doc, at 700wlw.com. He said, you were right about depression being depression. It's not about Facebook. It's about the host of other factors that lead to depression. When you're depressed, everything sucks. So if you're depressed, you see you don't have as many friends or whatever. Then it all adds up into, uh, to the depression and you are al- that you're already experiencing. John sent me one. He said, I don't have a Facebook account. I don't want a Facebook account. I don't want random people to find me. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's the other thing random people find i found you i've had people find me by the way that i really didn't want to find me people from you know years ago if somebody was that important in my life i would find them remember that kid i knew in school he was a good guy he meant a lot to me maybe i'll find him <laughs> you're fine if i haven't reached out to you on facebook i probably didn't want to find you I probably didn't want you to find me either. Stock tops at 700 WL. Probably getting really excited about opening day. Make your plans now for the Tri State Chevy Dealer Cincinnati Reds opening day. Coverage on the big one is presented by Callaway Cleaning Restoration and Meyer Activewear. Here's the lineup uh, I'm going to be at Cadillac Ranch with Jim Scott, Sloney and Tracy, Eric Dieters, and yes, Mark Amazon as well. We're going to be down there broadcasting. Listen, come on down and have fun with the guys. We're going to be hanging out there and it is going to be a ball. I'm, uh, Working on a couple things for Tracy Jones. Then Jim Scott, Jeff Henderson, Mark Amazon, and Eric Dieters in the Finley Market opening day parade presented by RNL Carriers. Then you can look for Willie Seg Lance under the stacks at the Great American Ballpark. If you need the full day schedule, check out 700wlw.com. Search opening day. I really wanted to go to the opening day uh, game, but I can't. I'm going to be down there, Cadillac Ranch. And then later in the afternoon, I have to uh, have to head back to work because I have some obligations, unfortunately. But I am going to go to the game Saturday night. Reds are off Friday, so it's opening day Thursday, off Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday. Sunday at about 7 o'clock, it's Reds uncut at the Aronoff Center. I am looking very much forward to that as well. I think I'm going to try to make that one. I have a couple things to take care of, but I'm, I'm juggling my schedule around as well. It is, uh, it's for all ages, but it's, it's kind of, I guess, hard to explain. Even when I talked to Drew Stubbs about it, there's some skits and you get to meet the players and they'll talk and it should be uh, pretty interesting. Proceeds benefit the youth, ba- youth baseball outreach program for the Reds Community Fund. If you need more information on that and how you can win tickets, 
to sit in a special box with Lance and son Casey. Just listen to Lance and check out his blog, 700WLW.com. Live at the Aronoff, that is Sunday night. So Reds in action, oh, a home opener or opening day on uh, Thursday, off Friday, Saturday and Sunday games, and then Sunday night, it's Reds uncut. I was uh, a little disappointed Ohio State lost. Good for Kentucky, so I guess I'm rooting for Kentucky and VCU now at this point. Um, it was, uh, it was a, an odd, odd set of games over the weekend. Very, very odd. I actually sat up and watched the, the, the game on, uh, for Kentucky and Ohio State. I watched the game, and it was painful if you're an Ohio State fan. No, it was painful to know they can put up the numbers that they put up all season long. And I got to give credit to Kentucky. I got to give it credit for their defense. They held Ohio State. And fittingly, it came down to the final shot for Ohio State. And they blew it. Plenty of time on the clock. And they blew it just like they were missing the shots all night long. So they have only themselves to blame, even though it was a little upsetting. So I guess I'm moving on. It's Kentucky and VCU that I'll be supporting in the final four. Doc Thompson, home of the Reds, 700 WL.